Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Car Conversations with Dudley's Dream Vacations. It's your host, me, KD. Let's jump right in. I'm so excited to be back with you all again just to go over some of my opinions on things that I'll be thinking. And today we're going to talk about something that I often hear a lot about. Yes, that's right. We're going to talk about Carnival versus Royal Caribbean. Now, I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet, but let's start by saying this, okay? I am an avid Carnival lover. Now, I've done cruises with Royal. I don't have any problem with Royal, Um, but for me, um, Carnival has always been my style. Um, I've been on quite a few Carnival cruises, and most of those have been um, with my family, Um, and so we would always, you know, choose Carnival um, because if you had to compare the two, Carnival would really be the more vacation-friendly, like budget-friendly option um, because, you know, a lot of people that do choose other cruise lines, I mean, y'all, you know, you got to be honest, you pay more. When we went on World Caribbean, we paid a lot more than we would have paid had we um, went on Carnival. Um, but saying that to say, um, each line has their own version of what I think brings greatness to the table. Um, so, I'm going to keep it brief because there's not really much to say of my opinion um, because everybody likes what they like. So this is just what I like. Um, I'm going to start with the ships. Now, I will say this. As far as ship design, as far as, you know, the decor, um, just how the ships are presented, um, some of the older carnival ships, I'm not a big fan of the theme or the decor. Now, I know that there was a guy, um, I think his name is Joe Farkas, and if I'm saying his name wrong, please forgive me, y'all. Don't light me up in the comments. But um, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of his, unfortunately. Um, I, I I didn't really like, you know, the gaudy, the, the tacky. It just looked tacky, you know, um, on some of those ship classes. Not every ship class, not every ship, but some of the ones that he designed. Um, for instance, you know, the Carnival Liberty. I think that is such a tacky looking ship, you know, and I love Liberty as far as, you know, my experience, but the overall look of it, it was, you know, I, I, I didn't really like it. I thought it was ugly, you know, um, same thing with, the uh what's the name of that ship the magic um now y'all have heard me say how much i love the dream class y'all know i love a dream class ship but magic wasn't giving it for me you know it was it was ugh, all that green and just you know it, it just looked weird you know like you know but i think my least favorite decorated ship would definitely be the liberty and you know to be honest that conquest class of ship seems like you know that was more experimental because now I had been on a fantasy class ship. Um, now, most of you who remember the sensation, uh, RIP to that ship, um, or should I say RIP, rest in pieces, because it's being dismantled if it hasn't been already dismantled. I'm going to have to look that up. But, you know, the sensation, I love the sensation, beautiful. Um, I I went on Carnival Victory Um, But that was my very first, first, first cruise. And I don't remember too much of that because I was so young. Um, Like I was around like seven, six or seven. So I don't quite remember everything about that ship. Um, I remember it was green everywhere I looked, but it wasn't the same green as Magic. This green was like an emerald, like, you know, kind of more upscale-ish green. but I don't remember a whole lot about that ship. Um, I never did the Destiny. I never did um, Triumph. But I did do Victory. Um, and so that's that class. Now, the Conquest class, we did Glory, Freedom, and Liberty um, out of that class. And Glory, I liked. Freedom, I liked. Liberty, I thought was the ugliest ship in the world. And then, you know, although I have not sailed on this ship that I'm about to say, I still don't think it's as nice as it could be. Um, we're talking about uh, the the conquest, um, valor. I, I don't really think I have a problem with it. I have not sailed on um, the spirit class ship, so no comment on those. Um, dream class. I thought the dream, y'all. I think that the dream is probably Carnival's most beautiful, elegant looking ship. Um, you know, I remember my very first. We've been on the dream twice, and I remember 
my first time on the dream. I don't know how old I was, but I was in Circle C. So however old, I was between 12 and 14. And, you know, I, I actually remember walking onto that ship and just being like, wow, this is gorgeous. <laughs> like, you know, I love the dream, love the breeze. Didn't really care for the design of the magic. Okay, but now that, that's just my opinion on carnival ships. You know, I don't think that the older ships, like now when you get newer, like dream class above, you know, uh, like Mardi Gras was beautiful. Celebration looks beautiful. Jubilee looks beautiful. So, you know, I, I think that it's just those Farkas designs that I'm not a very big fan of. Now, when we went on World Caribbean, we did go on Oasis of the Seas was one of them. And let me tell you this, Oasis of the Seas, the Oasis class ships, I think, are top notch for Royal. Um, especially at the time that we went, that class was really just taken off. Um, and it wasn't as expanded as it is now, but uh, that ship, I think was beautiful. Now, here's another thing too about decor. Um, I do think Roy I like Royals Royal Promenade. That seems to be a commodity among your ships. I like that. I like that when you step on to that area, you don't you feel like you're more like of a mall, like a, a, a upscale town center, if I will. You know, but another thing that I look at when I look at ship design is um walkability from front to back. Conquest class, you had to be on a certain deck to do that. I remember, and you see, like I said, I'm so in love with the dream class with Carnival because I know on deck four and deck five for the lower decks now, I'm not talking about the Lido deck and above. I'm talking about deck four, deck five. I could walk front to back if I needed to, if I wanted to, you know, uh, especially deck five where, you know, you have ocean plaza and you have all of that stuff. I could just walk the entire length of the ship and still get to the theater, to the dining room. Like, yo, that is not talked about enough as far as the overall walkability of that, sh of that class of ship. Now, Royal was kind of the same, kind of the same. There were certain decks you could do that on, but I just don't feel like it's as flexible as it could have been. You know, I don't want to have to walk down one or two flights of stairs, um, to get to where I'm going. Y'all feel me? Um, so that's how I feel about design. Now, like I said, I'm not going to, I don't want to keep this going very long. So let's just move right on to the next thing. Um, I would say activities. Okay. Now, this is where some of the lines get drawn for a lot of people. Let me say this. As far as your overall experience, your cruise is what you make it. Now, if I were to put neck and neck the Mardi Gras or what is the Excel class versus Oasis class or Icon class, even though they only have one in that class right now, okay, you're going to look at Royal and you're going to see things like ice skating, rock climbing. Um, I think there's zip lining. Uh, what else did they have on that ship? When I looked it up, it was zip lining. The wave surfing and, and you know, more and more activities like that. Um, and most of that, if I'm not mistaken, you do have to pay for. Not all of it, but I know some of it you had to pay for. Whereas if you compare that to an Excel class ship, um, you know, by the way, they both have water, their own respective water parks, you know, some water slides and all of that. So I'm not even going to count that. Um, but Carnival does have the ropes course that's free and you can kind of zip line off the side of the ship. <laughs> I would not do that. Um, uh, I was so glad it was windy the day that I was going to do it because then that was like my scapegoat. I was like, oh, I can't do it. They closed it because it's windy. So I was happy about that. We went on Mardi Gras. But um you know, uh, the the ropes course is free. What do we? Um, you do have to pay for the roller coaster. Um, you did have to pay for that. Um, of course, they had outdoor recreational activities like basketball and soccer and so on and so forth. So, um, I do notice that most of the activities that you know involve like uh, whatever that recreational outdooring is, whatever you would call that, most of that's free on Carnival. Where I think Royal to do certain things is more of a premium paid experience, which I can understand because their capacity is a lot more than what carnivals would be. Um, so I can understand having to have some type of pay tier so that, you know, you can kind of be able to offer it to as many guests as it can be offered to without, you know, you know, there being like a three hour wait, like you're at a theme park or something. So I get that. But um, besides recreation activities, you know, there are other activities that go on, you know, um, like Carnival has the quest, the adult 
scavenger hunt and you know um there's always stuff going on on both ships like karaoke and uh comedy shows and uh, broad, you know broadway style shows so there's a lot to do for that and i i would like to make a note if i could just to say that both of them offer great activities during the day um it's at night where i see the biggest difference i mean because the activity slash entertainment offering at night on carnival carnival is the fun ship it's the party ship so the party is going to be extended you're always going to have that i noticed that when i was on royal it was kind of like you know after a certain time let's let's turn this thing down you know i remember stumbling upon a, a club i don't even know where this was but i just know it had glass windows and i think it overlooked central park somehow and um the song want to be starting something by michael jackson was playing and they was getting down in there y'all hear me i mean they was getting down but it was like 11 o'clock and like after that that was it like it was shut down you know but carnival i can tell you a lot of the times i have been able to stay out to like five in the morning on carnival just just vibing just having a good time because the party doesn't stop you know they literally will wait till the last person to go in their cabin before the party stops so i think that there is a notable difference in that just as far as late night offerings now during the day, I think that they stack up about the same because, I mean, what's the difference between Carnival Bingo and Royal Bingo? What's the difference between the karaoke? Now, the shows, okay, look, okay, I agree with people, and Carnival, this is nothing against you, I love you, but I agree with people when they say Royal has the better Broadway-style shows, Okay, the production seems to be the strong suit of that. You know, like um, I've seen Hairspray on World Caribbean. And for those who don't know, Hairspray is my favorite musical. Um, so let me tell you, when I was there and they happened to play that, uh, I went to that show. It was amazing, 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 amazing. And Carnival doesn't do too bad with playlist productions, but um, Royal really steps it up a notch when it comes to you know the the theater show the broadway style shows um now if we're going to talk about entertainment and shows let's talk comedians and i'm gonna say this y'all whoever may disagree you could just disagree but nobody does comedians like carnival sorry point blank period carnival has the best comedians out there and that's just the honest to god truth in my opinion carnival has the better comedians you know Um, so there's the comedians we just talked about. Um, I don't really do nightclubs like I used to, um, not really my thing. Um, but I will say that Carnival's nightclubs seem to be, you know, a little more vibe, like a little more popular. Um, I did enjoy it when I did go, you know, it was really fun. Um, you know, just dancing the night away. Like I said, that goes all into late night stuff. So I don't want to just keep rambling about the same thing. Um, as far as food goes, let's talk about food. Okay. I feel like in my personal experience, there was more food on Carnival that was free. And it was still okay. It was still good. You know, whereas with Royal, you had the Windjammer and probably some places that I don't even remember um, because there were quite a few free places. Um, But let me say this right now. I would pay to go back to Johnny Rockets again because that food was good when I went. Okay, let me just tell you, all that was a good burger. So Johnny Rockets all the way. Um, But uh, notable mention pizza, pizza. Pizza del Cap- Pizzeria del Capitano will always have their foot on Sorrento's neck. <laughs> Period. If you have had Sorrento's and you have Pizzeria del Capitano, and for the OG Carnival fans, even if you had the Pizza Pirate, okay, y'all know that you cannot beat Carnival's Pizza. Sorry, you just can't when it comes to that type of a battle. Um, guys' burgers cannot be beat. Sorry. The Windjammer burgers, yeah, they nice. The little little hot dogs, little hamburgers, yeah, that's nice. But guys' burgers, chef's kiss. You just can't beat it. Um, so now that's just my opinion. Um, now we could, we could talk about destinations, but they pretty much sell the same places. Although I will say that Royal Caribbean has a one-up on Carnival when it comes to international destinations because Royal Caribbean has really tapped into the European market. Um, I have not been to Europe yet. It is my dream, y'all 
to go to London. I would love to go to London. That is my dream. I'm trying to get there in the next like year or two. So if anybody knows any hookups and want to look, I'm asking y'all for the hookup and I'm the travel agent. <laughs> but for real, though, if anybody want to sponsor my trip to London, please do. OK, for anybody that might be listening to this. Well, Caribbean, holla at you, dude. You want to sponsor a cruise to the Mediterranean? Stop me off in London. Look, I don't even know if they're in the same places, but wherever it is, you know, <laughs> hook a brother up. But um, let's see. So destinations, you get about the same thing. Um, I think Carnival has Australia on lock. So I will say that both of them cruise to Seattle. Both of them will cruise to Canada. So Walker really does have that market in Europe um, that I think that they dominate pretty well. Um, and, you know, as far as let's talk about staterooms real quick. Listen, this is an industry standard that Carnival has. Um, the largest state rooms for like a standard room. Like if you have a standard inside cabin or a balcony cabin, Carnival will have the bigger room um, more than likely. And it's not even by that much, but it's noticeable just a little bit. Um, now, if we're talking about suites, nobody does suites like Royal. I don't know if y'all seen them new suites that's on uh, that's on Icon that's $75,000 for the cruise. Huh? I would not pay for that unless Warrior wants to sponsor it. But um, you compare that to like the Excel suite with Carnival, which is pretty nice. But that Royal Townhouse, you know, I got to be honest with you. That is the, you know, that if 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 somebody gave me a choice, I would pick that, you know, but the Excel suites are nice, too. But then Carnival's main thing is like the Grand Suite. And I don't know exactly what Royals is, but, um, you know, that that's fine. Now, if we're talking about loyalty perks. I think that one's a draw for me. I think both cruise lines offer great loyalty perk. Um, obviously, I'm much closer, um, or should I say, I'm much higher in loyalty on Carnival than I am Royal. So I really can't speak too much um, on what their perks may be. I know at Carnival, you know, I'm only uh, 12 days from Platinum, and then I'll start getting some benefits with that. Um, I don't know what Royal has to offer once you get to that next tier, but because um, I haven't gotten there yet. Um, but you know, I, I think that they both offer great perks. I know at Carnival, you do get priority boarding. I don't know if you get that with Royal once you move up to the next tier. So, um, I'll leave that where it is. Cause I'm not going to speak on nothing. I don't know. Cause I'm not going to lie to y'all. There's one thing I'm not going to do. Um, so I, all in all, my pick will always be Carnival just because, um, I think that Carnival is the best bang for your buck. Um, if you're somebody that just wants to relax and take it easy and, you know, have it easy going, Royal may be more for you because Carnival, um, the party is always going to be going. Now, Carnival offers the best of both worlds because you, if you are a late night party or you want to turn up and have a good time, you can do that. But if you want to just lounge around and do nothing, you can do that. But I often read a lot of people say that it's just too much going on for them. And that's understandable because some people can be overloaded. So, you know, I get that if that's your thing, you know, don't feel ashamed. Um, but all in all, guys, Whatever you choose, let it be your choice. Now, my choice is Carnival just because it's budget friendly. Um, I do like what I'm getting with the loyalty programs, um, even just being a gold member. Um, I do enjoy the atmosphere better. And all in all, Carnival just has a special place in my heart because it was my first cruise. And there's just there's so many memories that just could never be duplicated just you know if sometimes i wish that i could take my memories out of my brain and just put them on a disc so i can like relive them in real time um but you know honestly both cruise lines are great both awesome both offer <laughs> awesome destinations awesome packages you know, whatever you want to do, they both are great. So I'm not going to bash one and praise the other. I'm going to say that if you like Carnival, you like Carnival. If you like Royal, you like Royal. Um, so I'm going to settle it there. Let me ask y'all, what would be your pick? I tell you what, uh, when you see this on YouTube, comment which one you like better. If you see this on Spotify, shoot us a DM on Instagram at Dudley Vacations and let us know um, which one you like better. So we'll wrap that up for now. That's all for Car Conversations with Dudley Dream Vacations. I do want to encourage y'all to go check out our website, DudleyVacations.com. Um, we do have a few things going on up there. 
uh, where you could be a part of some things, check it out. And as always, we're here to make your travel dreams come true. So thank you again. This has been a Dudley's Dream Vacations production. Peace out. Oh, honey, this view. You really outdid yourself. I think the same thing every time I look at you. Oh. <laughs> Destination exceptional. You deserve the very best. We'll make sure you get it. Are you dreaming of a family vacation to a theme park or a cruise, but think both are out of your budget? Dudley's Dream Vacations makes a family vacation affordable, and they don't charge any consulting or booking fees. Visit DudleyVacations.com to get your free quote today.